Hi everybody, TJ Mac Vintage Cards here. Today I'm doing a profile of the 1976 Topps baseball set. Part of my uh, 76 sets profile this weekend. Uh, I'm doing football, baseball, and hockey uh, key cards in, in each of those sets that I've selected. And for this particular year, just like the other years, I have uh, 30 of the key baseball cards from the 1976 year. And this again is a set that I built many many years ago every single uh, holder has the same label on it um so it's the earlier some of the earlier psa labels because i built this set like i said many many years ago and it's a grade seven um eight nice uh, near mint near mint mint uh set i think the cards present very nice for the year i'm not overly fussy about all that but i just um just like them to present kind of the same which um i think i was successful in doing for that year and um, just to get a closer look at the cards, we'll go through and we'll profile a few of the players. I like to still keep my videos within the eight to nine minute range. So first player we're looking at is Lou Brock, uh, number 10 card in the set. Um, next to him is George Brett. This is a particularly hard card to get, um, especially in the higher grades. This is a, a grade seven of it. I think it shows very well. This, like I said, is a, a very tough card. So real happy to have this one um, in my set. Next to him is uh, Gaylord Perry. Brooks Robinson. Looks like the sun in his eyes there. Dennis Eckersley, rookie. And then here's uh, Jim Catfish Hunter. Uh, he was uh, Major League Baseball's uh, first ever free agent to be signed in 1975. And that was after an arbitrator ruled in his favor against uh, A's owner, Charlie Finley. 23 of the 24 Major League teams went after Catfish, but he signed with the Yankees. Um, he won 20-plus games five years in a row from 71 to 75. He ended his career with 224 wins and a 3.26 ERA. He was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1987. Uh, Jim Hunter did not get his famous catfish name until he signed with the Kansas City A's in 1964 by then A's owner Charlie Finley. Finley wanted Hunter to have a catchy nickname, so he made up a story that Hunter was fishing one day when he was a little kid and came home with a large catfish. The story was repeated to the media, and the nickname stuck. So that's how he became Catfish Hunter. And that's his first Yankees card. Here we have Steve Garvey. Padres Dave Winfield, Carl Yastrzemski, a very close up shot of Pete Rose, Willie Stargell, and then this is uh, just a beautiful, beautiful card. Um, I love the dust settling there in that picture of Johnny Bench. Just a Classic catcher photo. And then going over here, we got second year Robin Yount. Tony uh, Perez, uh, like Rose and Bench, part of those big red machine uh, teams. In 76, the Reds um, won uh, the World Series. Back-to-back -back titles, uh, sweeping the Yankees in a very lopsided series. 22 runs to 8, they outscored them. And Perez was um, just a, a RBI guy. That's what he was known for. He's one of the great RBI men of his generation. On uh, an 11-year stretch from 67 to 77, Perez drove in 90 or more runs each year with a high of 129 RBIs in 1970. During the decade of the 70s, Perez was the second among all major leaguers in RBIs with 954, behind only his teammate Johnny Bench. He was a seven-time All-Star, two-time World Series uh, winner, and overall he played in five World Series, uh, four with the Reds and one with the Phillies. And next to him you got Nolan Ryan, another great pitcher, lefty Steve Carlton. The near hero of the 75 World Series, Carlton Fisk. Reds ended up prevailing in that series, but Fisk had, as we all know, the dramatic home run. It's a beautiful looking uh, Carew card. I love the uh, like the fuchsia and the blue with the with matches the jersey really nice on that card. 
It's a sharp card. Then he got Raleigh Fingers. Just let a pitch go. And then here's your MVP of the National League in 1976, Joe Morgan. This is his second of back-to-back -back MVPs. Uh, 1976, he hit 320 with 27 home runs, 111 RBIs. Now, while uh, Joe Morgan's numbers speak for themselves, he was also uh, well known for his little elbow click when he was at the bait, uh, when he was at the plate getting ready to swing. Um, he, his back elbow would always flap like a chicken as he awaited the pitch. And I read that the flapping came under the advice of Nellie Fox when he was a teammate with him with the Houston Colt 45s, later became the Astros. Uh, Nellie Fox was uh, Joe Morgan's hero. He was a fellow little man like Joe Morgan, and um, he wanted to set to prove himself out that little men can do all the, all the same jobs that the big men can do in the majors. And Morgan really had great power, especially for a guy his size. And uh, it, it was Fox who told Morgan to flip his el flap his elbow. So early in his career, um, Morgan uh, was keeping his back elbow too low. Fox suggested that Morgan um, flap the elbow to help him keep it up. Morgan took the advice and it became his trademark uh, throughout his career, uh, which was 22 years in the big leagues. Here's uh, Phil Necro. Second year, Gary Carter. Uh, first card where he's pictured by himself, uh, at least for tops. And uh, Jim Palmer. Here's Mike Schmidt. Uh, he had four home runs in 1976. I believe it was in a 10 inning game. Got another beautiful card, the coloring going real well with the uh, photo there. And then uh, finishing up the bottom row here, we got Reggie Jackson. Uh, he played for the Orioles in 76, but here he is pictured with the A's. And get him on an Orioles card. William, Willie McCovey, Padres now. Uh, went over from the Giants. Don Sutton. Last card of Hank Aaron. Get another beautiful card. Uh, I just love how these, how they really took the time. Uh, it looked like Topps did to get the uh, colors to match a lot of the uniforms, which I really like. And uh, on these cards, same with this one here, with Tom Seaver on the Mets. Cards really blend well together. Just, just a really sharp set. And then I'm finishing up here with Thurman Munson. And I'll speak a little bit to him. So uh, Thurman Munson, he was the MVP of 1976. He had a 302 batting average, 17 home runs, 105 RBIs. Uh, of course, we know Munson's career ended in tragedy when he died in a plane crash in 1979. I remember that. I was probably like five years old, but I remember my mom coming on the porch telling us that Thurman Munson had died. And I was like, whoa, you know, I was a Yankees fan. So I was my brother. Uh, he died at the age of 32. Uh, though Thurman, he's not a Hall of Famer, he was a key player for those Yankees teams uh, that went to the World Series three years in a row, 76, 77, 78. Munson was a great playoff performer. He had 357 in the playoffs, uh, drove in 22 runs in 30 games. He was uh, also the third catcher um, and the second one to do it to win an MVP, a Gold Glove, a World Series, and a Rookie of the Year. The others were uh, Johnny Bench and Buster Posey. So again, Won a, a MVP, Gold Glove, World Series, and Rookie of the Year. Third catcher to do that. So this is, uh, again, one last look at the 76 Tops baseball set. And uh, like all my sets, this was a, a fun one to put together and find all the cards for. Sometimes it takes a while to find them, even back then when I was buying them. But um, I was, you know, took my time and wanted to get ones that really fit my set. So I was really happy with uh, the choices I made. So everybody have a great rest of the day and we'll talk again soon.